Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad. You know, it's funny coming into service early, and I have the opportunity to listen to praise and worship as they get ready and they do their sound checks. It's funny because what I'm hearing and what they're hearing are two different things. What I was hearing sounded great. It sounded wonderful, but they could hear the the mic levels and uh, people being out of tune that I don't necessarily hear because that's not necessarily my world or my realm. And it's funny because it, it, it made me think about when we go through things and people look at us and question why we still serve God. And they don't hear what I hear. What the old folks say, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. It, it, it made me think about the greatest testimony that any of us ever has. And that testimony is I almost. I almost lost my mind. And I almost died. And I almost walked away. And I almost gave up. But if it had not been for the Lord who is on my side, hallelujah, that's the greatest testimony is I almost, I almost quit, but God is bigger than that, amen. And I got to thinking about some of the stuff that we go through and some of the things that we see and, 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 and when I was looking and I was thinking, you search your mind and I thought about this scripture in Philippians chapter 4. And he says, rejoice, Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto me, all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for, for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, my brother, whatsoever things are true, we hear a lot of false stuff, but whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. I know what the news is spinning. I know what people are saying, but if there be any good thing, hallelujah, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, hallelujah. So, let's take the limits off of God this morning. Not, not, not necessarily us and what we do, but let God have his reign in here. Let's create an atmosphere that's conducive for the spirit to move in your house in your heart and in your mind hallelujah let's take the blinders off let's take the restrictions off let's take all of those things let's set them aside and let's worship god this morning i don't know where you're worshiping at if you're in your house in your living room i want you to give god some praise that the people in your house will come running to the spot that you're in and say what is going on in the house this morning let's worship god hallelujah no restraint no restriction give god some praise hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. father in the name of jesus we bless you this morning we magnify you this morning we glorify you this morning father in jesus name we give you all the praise and all the glory we repent right now god we repent for our sins for our uh, our willingness to put put blinders and and put you in a box we repent god for putting restrictions on you and saying things that you can't do when we know that you can do all things father 
in the name of Jesus we unleash your power this morning oh God in Jesus name we welcome your presence here God don't just move through the room but relax yourself on us sit down in the midst of us oh God we all be find pleasure in our praise this morning oh God in the name of Jesus have your way heal those that need to be healed deliver those that need to be delivered God in the name of Jesus Satan would come against you right now we're tired of your lies we're tired of your, of your dishonesty and we come this morning to bless our God and we put you in the only position that you belong and that is underneath our feet in the name of Jesus God we give you glory we give you praise we give you honor we worship you this morning let's worship God in spirit and in truth this morning let's worship him like we have lost our mind let's worship him oh god like nothing else matters in jesus name Hallelujah. amen you Jesus God you've been better than good. better than good hallelujah
been better than good to me. Better than good to me. moment think about what he saved you from but God we serve the most high God there are so many people that serve idols and they can't have that testimony but God, if it had not been for God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can't imagine living this life without hope of God. But God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They are the works of man. You are the most high God. There is no one like you. All of the other gods, Buddha, Muhammad, Hare Krishna, they are the works of men. I serve the most high God. Yeah. There is no one like you. All of the other gods, they are the works of men. You are the most high God. There is no one like you. Jehovah, you are the most high. You are the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high.
other gods. Mm. All of the other gods, they are the works of men.
what it's like in your home, but the Spirit of the Lord is here. So if you haven't tapped in, you're going to have to bear with us a moment. Oh, God, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. The Most High God. The Most High God. The Most High God. The Most High God. Worship you. Hallelujah. Just bathe in his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are the most high God. Hallelujah. Nobody but you, Lord Jesus. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. We welcome you, Holy Ghost. We welcome you into this house. Hey, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing. We thank you that the Spirit of God is in this house. We thank you for your presence, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Oh, hold on. Ah, thank you, Lord Jesus. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. Oh, we serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. And we thank him for his presence in this house. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank the praise and worship team for ushering in the spirit of the Lord. I thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you for the Spirit of God that dwells all over you. You let the Lord use you at all times and may his praises. Oh, glory, 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 Lord, I thank you. Oh, I thank you. I it's been a many a day. A many a day, Monica come up in here. Didn't want to come up in here because of what she was going through. Because she didn't feel good. But God said not so. Your pressing has blessed you in a mighty way. You haven't seen yet what God's going to do. Oh, Lord, 
Oh, I thank you for your presence. It's in the house. He's in the house. I hope you that are watching, he's in your house. I hope you that are listening, he's with you in your car, wherever you may be. I hope and I pray that he's with you. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Oh, don't miss, don't miss what God has. Don't miss, don't miss what God has in store. Don't miss, don't miss what God has in store for you. Oh, he's doing something. He's moving mightily. People are see. Oh, Lord Jesus, don't let this pandemic disguise you or mislead you. You got to know that God, God is still moving. God is in the midst of it all. God is doing something. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. Mm. Hallelujah. Giving honor to God who is ahead of my life. I come to you today. I thank you. I am Evangelist Ramsey. And I thank and I praise God for our pastor. I give honor to our pastor, Pastor Harold and Pastor Angie. I thank and I praise God for it. in their absence. I thank you for the opportunity to go before your people. I thank you for what God is doing in your lives because he's moving mightily. And you have yet to see what God is going to do through you, in you, and with you. God has something special in store for the Wimberleys. Praise God. That's why the enemy is fighting them so hard. Build them up in prayer. Keep them up in prayer. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for all of you that are watching, and I thank God for all of you that are here. I thank the Lord for my daughter and my grandson for coming out. I thank the Lord for my husband. I know you're watching Mike Ramsey, and I thank God for you every day. I wouldn't be where I am or as strong as I am if it wasn't for you as well. I thank the Lord for you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now go with me in prayer, all of you. I thank you, Lord John. I thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity, Lord, to go before your throne of grace, to share your word, to share what you have given to me, Lord, to speak unto your people. I ask you, Lord God, to come forth and you speak in the name of Jesus. Not my will, but that thy will shall be done. I thank you right now, Lord God, for Pastor Charles, for his support and his facilitation and for him being here. Lord, I feel his spirit and I thank you that he's here. I thank you, Lord God, for the people of God that are hearing. Open up their ears that they're here. Open up their hearts that they'll receive. Open up their minds, Lord God, that they'll comprehend all that you have to say to them. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for all things because we serve an awesome God. Now have your way. Have your way, Lord God, and speak in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 God is good. Turn your Bibles with me, if you will, to 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. I thank and I praise God for Brother Greg and his son for taking care of our audio and visual and making sure we're doing things on time and on key. I thank you for doing that. God is good. First Samuel, the 17th chapter. And I'm going to read several verses to you. I'm going to begin with verse 1 through 9 and then 38 through 47. And just stay with me, if you will. Now the Philistines gathered together 
their armies to battle and were gathered together at the Shoko and belongeth to Judah and pitch between Shoko and Azekah in Ephesus the Mima. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines and again and the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side and there was a valley between them and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath whose height was six cubits and a span and he had a helmet of brass upon his head and he was armed with the coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shackles of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spear's head weighed 600 shackles of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. Now go up a little bit further to verse 38, if you will. And let me say, I'm using my phone because at home I study and I have a magnify glass to make it a lot bigger into my Bible but in my phone I have it on large so therefore I can see better amen but I do have my Bible I don't go anywhere without my sword let me just say that amen verse 38 and it reads and Saul armed David with his armor and he put an helmet of brass upon his head also he armed him with a coat of mail and David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Amen. Thank God for the reading of his word. Today's topic that the Lord had given me is defeating giants and recognizing them. Defeating giants giants and recognizing them. Life's Goliaths come in all shapes, sizes, and intensities, such as an unhappy relationship, a rebellious child, a difficult job, a pile of debt, or an uncontrollable habit, or even being fearful of this pandemic. But if we avail ourselves of God's power, then we, like David, can ultimately gain victory over a seemingly unsurmountable problem. When you are going through anything, you got to be careful what you say, how you describe your circumstances. See, in the beginning, the Philistine used words like, if you beat me, we will serve you. But if I beat you, you will serve the Philistines. But notice what David declared victory. David declared victory over Goliath 
before the battle even began. In 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, verse 46, he says, This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. David's confidence came from within. His confidence came from experience. Remembering times in the past when the Lord protected and strengthened him, such as moments when a lion or a bear had threatened his flock. That's found in the 37th verse. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with thee. But as he faced the fearsome giant, David wisely recalled how faithful God had always been to him. Strong convictions about the Lord and what he could do, David knew he had full access to his heavenly father's storehouse of power. The Lord had given him courage and wisdom, practical habits that bolstered his faith. David had spent hours, hours alone in the wilderness listening to God's voice. How often do we listen to the voice of the Lord? So he knew how to discern what the Lord was telling him to do. I encourage us today, we need to try following David's example. We need to keep a record of the Lord's work in our lives and meditate on who he is. Then we, too, can be confident that God is sufficient. No matter how large the problem is that you're facing, you need to speak life into every situation. We need to say to ourselves, I'm a child of the Most High God, and there is nothing too hard for God. We got to know who we are and who we belong to. You know the story of David and Goliath. No matter how much advice Saul tried to give David, I believe David kept saying in his head, I'm a child of the Most High God. Saul tried everything that he could. Saul offered to give David some armor. You know how that goes when you're going through something and you share your story about what's going on. You know how sometimes you can share something with someone and they already have opinion about what you should do. How you should handle that circumstances. What they would do and what you need to say. Everybody got an opinion. But Saul he told David, you are just a youth, and the Philistine is a man. Saul looked at David on the outside. He didn't know what was in David on the inside. See, some of your friends and some people that you know, they see your outer appearance, but they don't know everything that you've gone through. They don't know what you carry on the inside and where your strength really comes from. So Saul tried to give David his armor. Saul's armor was too big. Saul tried to give David his shield, but the shield was too wide. David needed to see in front of him. David needed to look at the enemy in his eye and tell him, you don't know who I am. That's my theology. I'm sure David kept saying in his head, I'm a child of God. God has blessed me in many ways, and I have been able to protect the sheep that I watch over without any of them ever being taken. David Saul asked David and tried to give David his sword, but the sword, I believe, was just too heavy. 
See, the advice that others want to give you, you have to think about what they're saying before you start to say anything or put anything in place. Because I know that God is a deliverer. Now, they might, you might need to express yourself every now and then, but I'm here to tell you there is nothing like going to God for yourself. That's what David was thinking. No matter even David's brothers, when David arrived there, he took some food that his father asked him to take to his brothers. And when the brothers looked at David, they began to ask him, what are you doing here? And David was listening, keen ear on what was taking place and what war they were fighting. The brothers began to intimidate or try to intimidate David. They told him, you need to go back and keep those little sheep that you're keeping at home. They began to criticize him and tell him how little he was and he was unfit to fight with them. They begin to push him aside and push him back. But some of the people there at war was listening and word got back to Saul on David had said he would fight the Philistine. So Saul sent for David and David told him that he was equipped and ready to fight the Philistine. But no, Saul had an opinion, an opinion that wasn't worth anything. Because when it's all said and done, in the end, which we know we gonna win, God had already set it up for David to conquer. And I know that David must have looked at the Philistine, and I'm sure he had to reassure himself and say, he may be big, but my God is bigger. He may be strong, but my God is stronger. He might think he's mighty, but my God is a mighty God. And David went out, looked across the way, because the Philistine was on one mountain, and David and the Israels were on the other mountain. And there was a low valley in the middle. So David had plenty of time to build himself up, because sometimes when we're going through, you need to just build Build yourself up. You need to get into your word and say there's nothing too hard for God. You need to get into your word and says my God can do all things. You need to get into your word and let you tell yourself he said he would never leave me. He said he would never forsake me. So I know that when I stretch across this mountain that he is with me across this mountain just like he was in the shepherd field so David began to walk he began to run he was in the valley but his eyes was on the victim he was looking directly at the Philistine see most of the time we find ourselves talking about our problem talking about our situation talking about the circumstance when you need to just be quiet sometimes you have to be still sometimes you have to be quiet Sometimes you just have to know deep down on the inside who you really are. See, David knew who he was because he had already slayed, I'm sure, several lions. I'm sure several bears. I'm sure several animals that tried to come up against him. They were no competition against him because David looked at the circumstance and he refused to let any of them take away his father the sheep and that's how we have to be we have to look at the circumstance and let the Lord and let Lord know he's leading you Lord I thank you because you are ahead of my life I thank you for leading me into the circumstance so that you can get full victory so I can just praise you even more so see some things that we go through it ain't just the enemy some things has been designed for you to go through some things has been set up for you to experience the Bible tells me in the book of James don't count it strange as you go through all these fiery tests and trials, all you got to do is know who you are in Christ Jesus. It tells us to laugh at your problems. It tells us to praise your way through. It tells you to hold up your head, to hold up and know who God is. You don't have to give up. You don't even have to think about it. Because it ain't 
ain't your sister or your brother. It's not even your mom or your dad. It's not even your best friend that can help you. The problem that can help with the adversary is God himself, our Jesus Christ. And I only stop by to tell you today that we have already won. We already won when he went up on Calvary and he died for our sins. We already have his grace. We already have it because he shed his blood for you and for me. We don't have nothing to worry about because God is with us today and every day because he's God almighty. He's God. And the Bible tells me that the Philistine came even drew himself near unto David. He drew himself near unto David because he thought he could beat David. He thought he had the upper hand. And that's how the enemy, the enemy would do you. The adversary would make you think that you don't have no way of defeating him. He's going to think he's stronger than you. He's going to think he's mightier than you. When sickness come upon your body and the doctors have said there's nothing they can do, the enemy going to say, gotcha. I know you're worried now. I know you don't know what to do but I come to tell you that the sickness ain't got you you got the sickness because all you have to do is turn that thing over to Jesus all you have to do is praise your way out all you have to do is shout day in and day out read your word build up your strength build up your faith and know your God is able that's all you have to do. The Philistine said to David, am I a dog that thou comest to me with staff? And the Philistine cursed David and his God. But he could do that because he didn't know David's God. The enemy doesn't know what you are equipped with. He doesn't know what you're packing. He doesn't know that you have your double barrels. He doesn't know that behind you, you are well equipped with your shotguns, that you know how to handle him. So it's okay that he comes to you in a disguised way. It's okay that he comes to you in a faltering way. It's okay that he comes to you in a way that you don't understand or you don't recognize. But today, I say to you, recognize who he is. Recognize the enemy. If it's not a positive note, you know it ain't God if it's not if it's doom and gloom you know it ain't God you need to stand tall and know who your God is so in the 42nd verse he says the Philistine looked at David he disdained him for he was but a youth he looked at him and he probably laughed he probably laughed and said <laughs> this is a boy this is a boy coming at me because in the beginning, I read to you how tall he was. I read to you how big he was. I told you he was a giant. Amen? He looked at him, but he thought he was a youth, and he was ruddy and of a fair countenance. The Philistine said to David, am I a dog that thou cometh to me this way? Don't you ever give the enemy any information. None thinking he was already defeated because he thinks he's already defeated you. Goliath already thought he had defeated David, but he had not defeated David. Thinking that he had, he began to run toward David. David began to run toward him. David recognized that Goliath had his sword. He recognized that Goliath had his his armor, that he had his shield. David didn't have his armor, nor did he have his shield. The only thing he had in his hand was a slingshot, and he began to run. So I do understand why Goliath would look down at him and think, he don't even have any armor. He cannot 
whoop me because he's not even equipped. But that was okay because David began to run. And as David got closer and Goliath got closer, I'm pretty sure that Goliath felt like he was just going to swoop this boy up and he was going to destroy him. But I come to tell you that God had a different plan. That when David got closer to Goliath, David just reached down into his bag and he pulled out one of them smooth rocks and he reached back with his slingshot shot and he let it go and as it went off into the air it hit Goliath directly in the center of his head and Goliath went down and I know he stung Goliath because Goliath had whooped many 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 men but David had whooped many many animals so David began to run even closer to him and I'm sure the Israelites began to celebrate they began to shout and raise and they begin to scream and say look at David Goliath have been defeated and that's what we need to do we need to shout and recognize that the enemy has been defeated that you are stronger than you think you are you are mightier than you think you are that you carry all that you need you are equipped as well because you are equipped with three smooth rocks you got the father the Son and the Holy Ghost and there's nothing out there that can whoop you so you're more than able you're more than able so yes we know the ending David whooped Goliath and I come to tell you that everything you have that's in your way any problem any sickness any disease if your children are out there not like they should if they're struggling any if they're having in hard times I come to tell you that the remedy to it all is you gonna have to come down and you gonna have to get on your knees and you gonna have to well into the spirit and tell God all about it you gonna have to tell the Lord I need you right now and you gonna have to thank him thank him for the victory thank him for conquer thank him for healing thank him for making a way thank him for the discovery thank him right now because God is more than able and if that don't work I'm going to tell you like my mama told me get back down and pray some more because that's not the end of it you need to pray a little bit longer you need to call it out a little bit longer you need to tell God all about it and leave it right where it's at don't worry about telling mama don't worry about telling daddy don't worry about talking to your best friend. You need to know that God's got your back because if God had you go through it, God's got the power to bring you through it. If God had it developed, then he's surely gonna destroy it. You gotta know without a shadow of a doubt that your God is able. He's more than able. You got to know that your God has all power, all power in the palm of his hand. Man. and even if you get weak you gotta know that he's still able because as God Jesus hung on the cross and he asked his heavenly father forgive them for they do not know you gotta speak that thing to existence that it, enemy you just don't know who I am it cannot come not my dwelling I refuse to accept it I know who I am I know I am equipped and I know that you are more than able. You got to tell God. You got to get in your word and tell him, I know you're more than able, Lord. You got to say it, stand tall. You got to say it with confidence. You got to say it with reassurance. You got to say it and be positive. You got to fight the good fight of faith. And you got to fight with all your might. You got to do it. Because if you don't do it, can't nobody do it for you. Everybody have their own battles to go through. Everybody has their own situations to overcome. Everybody is on a different level. But whatever level you on, God is right there with you. There's nothing that God cannot do. There's nothing that God won't do. 
The only thing God can't do is he ain't going to lie. He's not going to sin, and he's not going to lie. But he will, he will take you through every obstacle that comes your way. The enemy wants you to believe that you can't be debt free. He wants you to believe that the debt is too tall, that you owe too much, that I, I, I'm not going to ever come out of this. And I'm here to tell you, yes, you will, that there's nothing too deep and nothing that's too much that your God cannot bring you out of. God is more than able. And those material things that you may have lost, the houses, the cars, the homes, whatever you have, if it's the time and you had, you've lost those things, don't worry about it. God would give it back to you double that. He would give you more than what was taken from you. But you have to know it in your word. You have to study it like never before. You have to count on him like never before. Because God is able. He's more than able. And I'm just assured the more I study and the more I read, God is building up his kingdom. He's doing a work right now. We're always talking about the last and evil days. Yes, we're in the last and evil days, but God is building up his army and he got an army that I don't know, but I believe in my heart the praise and worship team is going to have to sing up in heaven. They're going to have to sing. And brother to Pastor Charles, you one of those that God, when you go home, God going to need you to stand speaking that word over and over, speaking that word. He got exalters who going to exalt the name of the Lord. He got those that he has equipped to go into battle with him. Those that are equipped, not like you think to be equipped, but those who are ready and armored up with the word of God. He got them singing. He got them playing the harps, playing instruments. He got the music going forth. God is ready and we're going to bow to him and say holy, 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 holy is our Lord. God is getting us ready we are not gonna always be here and I just believe I'm one of his exalters I'm one of his praisers and I'm gonna praise everyone else that's coming through but God is getting us prepared and you can't stay here if you're planning to go to heaven and if you're planning to go to heaven you need to line up Get right the gifts that God has given us that he's placed in the body of Christ as he saw fit. You know your gift. You know your gift. It's time for you to stand up. Come forth. Walk in your call. Do what God called you to do so that when he calls you home, you can do the work of the kingdom. If you're not ready here, you're not going to be ready up there. Yes, the fivefold ministry is here in CLFMI. They're already here. Why they're not coming forth, I don't know. The gifts of administration already here. The gifts of healing. Keisha Ross, Diane Coleman, they have healing in their hands. Use what we got here. So when we get up in heaven, we can walk in an assurance of what our call is. Of what we need to do. How we need to be. So that we can support our heavenly father. So that we will be ready in those days. This is time. Don't sit on your gift. Don't wait on your gift. If you know what your gift is, stand up and walk in your gift. Tell pastor what your gift is. He shouldn't have to call you and tell you what your gift is. Do the work of the ministry. We got enough teachers that Pastor David should have a different minister teach for every month. I'm talking about daytime Bible class and I'm talking about nighttime Bible class. We have enough ministers and pastors that if our pastors are not able to be here, that they should be able to make one phone call or send a text. And we should be ready 
to do whatever we're asked to do because that's what God is requiring. That's what God is requiring. Don't look at this pandemic. Look at God. It wasn't the pandemic that shut the world down. It was God. God shut it down. He reprioritized some of us. Those that worked, worked, and those that didn't, didn't. Now, we can't even come to church and fill the church up. We can't even hug and, and one another. But God is still in the midst. Because this is the year of blessings. And I don't know about you. I'm positioning myself to be blessed. I'm positioning myself to be blessed. Position yourself to be blessed. God is moving now. And he's positioning his people now so that you can reap his benefits. So that you can walk in his power and you can be blessed. Do what you know you're supposed to do. Do what is right. I thank God for the gifts are here. I don't see him today, but Brother Herschel as a security, he ain't gonna have to be security in heaven, but he sure gonna be walking around telling folks, well, you know what you're supposed to be doing. You know you're supposed to be teaching uh, um, uh, Pastor Roger. Why, why are you over here? You ain't supposed to be exalting with Sister Ramsey. Go on over there and, and do what you're supposed to do. And then we have the Jennifer. The Jennifer who documents and keep everybody on, on, on point, letting you know what's going on, who's doing what, who's where, what's going on so you don't miss anything, so that we're all connected. He gonna have Jennifer doing just that because she's good at it. He's gonna have those who have the power, the power he's given them in their hands to heal to lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Miracles are to take place this year in this house among us. That's what we're praying for. That's what we're seeking him for. God has a mighty work and a mighty work he has. And we are well equipped to do what he calls us to do. I don't know about you. I want to be ready when he calls me. I don't want to miss the call. I want to be ready and I want to do whatever it is he would have me to do. You ought to be ready and willing to be ready so whenever he calls you, you can do whatever he's calling you to do. Amen? See, people take it really lightly on what they do here on earth. Don't take what your servant work is or what you do, your occupation or your gift or whatever you do. Don't take it lightly. God gave it to you. God gave it to you. It's gonna be nice to know we got nurses up there. They're gonna be well equipped and know exactly what we need to do and they're gonna tell us how to avoid. But we still gonna be in the fight. God is moving and he's ready for you. He's waiting for you to get up and to do what you have been called to do. And I know that many of you are at home and are listening to the sound of my voice. And I'm going to ask everyone to stand because we're going to open the doors of the church. And I know everyone here may be a member, but God is waiting on you. And if you're at home and you haven't received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm telling you at home, you can receive him. You can receive him at home. All you have to do is raise your hands and say, I accept the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord. All you have to do is repent of your sins and call upon his name and he will receive you. And if you don't have a church home, you need one. You need saints overseeing your soul. You need a church home where you can come together with people, where the pastor can reach out and pray for you, where you can 
congregate with other people like yourself that can help build you up where you may be weak. This is the time to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. All you have to do is just say it. Lord, I repent for anything I said, done, for anything I thought that was not like you. I ask you right now, Lord, to forgive me of all of my sins. I ask you to cleanse me with the blood of righteousness. Lord, I receive you into my heart right now in Jesus' name, and the Lord will receive you. If you don't have a church home, contact CLFMI. We will direct you in the way that you should go. But don't hesitate because tomorrow's not promised to you. It's not promised to me. You need to do this right now. And for you that are still at home, I'm telling you here, we are practicing social distancing. And if you want to come out, you will be distanced because the spirit in the house is not the same as being at home. It's totally different. And we will all keep our distance. But God is good and he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Now let's defeat the enemy. Let's defeat the giants that are in your life. Recognize who they are, what they are. Recognize what they are. Sometimes we put these giants before God. Recognize it, repent of it, and turn from it so that we can get it right, so that we can humble ourselves and do more of what God would have us to do. Amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your awesome word, helping us learn to defeat the giants in our lives, teaching us, Lord God, how to recognize them, and in recognizing them, how to destroy them, how to fight, how to fight and what ammunition we need. Sometimes we forget because our day-to-day -day activities sometimes take us, take our minds over. But Lord, help us to remember all the obstacles you've brought us through, all the giants you've brought us through, all the things you've done for us. Help us to remember, help us to recognize so that we can continue to fight the good fight of faith. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. You ever think about those fire stones? Anybody? You ever think about the fire stone? The Bible said that he got those fire stones from the brook. The brook, symbolic of the spirit. The fire stones are symbolic of the word. And the pouch is symbolic of the heart. And it was David that said, that your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. If you want to do the will of God, you have to pull the word out of your heart. Amen. Sometimes there has to be a word of war. Sometimes there has to be a word of peace. But if you don't have the word in your heart, you have nothing to draw from. So it is important to get, to get the word in you. Amen. Amen. Praise God for that word. All right, sis. All right. <laughs> hey, man. It's a good word. Good word. She had me flipping and looking up stuff. I'm like, all right, sis. I like this. <laughs> good word. Good word. I appreciate a timely word. Hey, Amen. So at this time, uh, it's offering time. And uh, they understand that this is not a, a government-aided facility that we exist from tithes and offerings. Amen. That um, I don't sound like I'm begging. I don't want to sound like I'm begging, but I want you to understand that uh, there are certain programs and things that that the church is doing that can't be done 
unless we tithe and offer. Amen. And, then, and understanding that uh, there is a need in the community and those needs are being uh, fulfilled and supplied strictly from a lot of a lot of our tithes and offering and, and God has blessed us in this thing and just be mindful of that as we give amen as we give um, there are several ways to give you have a cash app uh, cash app at dollar sign 1601 CLFMI we have a Venmo Tithely and you can mail it in if you're a little old school you can still mail it in you can bring it up amen you can go on our Facebook page at CLFMI church dot church under give amen amen and if if somebody's here uh, that, that has uh, you know the, the the check you can give it to uh Give it to, do we have any deacons in the house? Yeah, yeah, give it to a deacon or an usher, amen. And uh, we can move forward that way. So uh, there will be, um, we have prayer, prayer requests. Continue to pray for those on our prayer list. Also keep the Pope family in mind in your prayers. In the passing of our sister Carol Pope, who was an active member of CLFMI for several years before moving to Florida. There will be a virtual memorial service this evening at 4 p.m. You can attend the service by going to our Facebook page, our Facebook group page, and hitting the link. You can stay connected throughout the week. We have Wednesday Bible class, we have noon Bible class, and we have a 7 p.m. Bible study. Fridays we have the good book club discussion um, that's us as we're going through the New Testament reading one chapter Monday through Friday remember getting that word putting that word in your heart amen that's how we do it that's how we do it staying in the word of God um, you can uh, you can connect by going to the website that is clfmi.church uh, CMI, clfmi.church and a text message is sent out weekly as a reminder during the month of May every Friday at 7 p.m. United Sisters will present Am I My Sister's Keeper? Now, this discussion will take place by way of Zoom please go to the clfmi.church or clfmi webbook, uh, Facebook page to get the information to register and Pastor Harold and Pastor Angela would like to thank everyone for their prayers for Kayla, for the ga their grandbaby, Ariana, and for Candace. Kayla is COVID-free, COVID praise God. Ariana is recovering. She is recovering well from COVID. Candace is still in the hospital. Candace is still in the hospital. We're going to pray this week uh, for her healing, and we're praying that she be home sometime next week amen and we have an announcement those how many people got vaccinated has, has been vaccinated amen i've been vaccinated praise god if you have not been vaccinated um anybody living in washington county uh 16 and up and would like to be vaccinated christian christian love fellowship can now sign people up for Pfizer at EMU Conviction, uh, Convocation Center. Please email Pastor Harold at Harold.Wimberly, Harold.Wimberly, I, uh, he's, he's, he, he uh, texts this to me, so I'm not sure <laughs> what it's supposed to say, but at Harold.Wimberly at, I believe, CLI, CLFMI.org, Harold.Wimberly at CLFMI.org, and leave there your phone number and the best time to call, and he'll get back to you. Amen? That's if you want to be vaccinated and you are 16 years and older for the Pfizer uh, vaccination. Let's all stand, and we can be dismissed. Praise God for this word. I never really preach that word so I think I'm gonna have to go home and study that some
Amen. I don't think I've ever preached that. So I'm going to have to go study that one. I praise God for that. I praise God to see uh, faces in this place. Amen. I don't know about you, but it's hard to preach to empty seats. <laughs> so it's good to see you. I wish I could hug you. If it wasn't against the law, I would hug all of you. Pastor, Pastor Arnold's uh, uncle, Uncle Irv, Big Unc, I miss you, dude. I would love to hang out with you sometime when we get some time. Amen. I miss everybody. I love everybody. Amen. It's good to see you. If you're listening, if you haven't turned off, we are open. We are open. Amen. We are open. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to dismiss. I promise. I work at Chrysler. And it's, it's funny because when we went back to work, we went back to work and we had all these strict guidelines and everything else. But we were making 600 cars a day on my shift. That close, we were about 1,200 cars a day. We we're making all these cars every day. After the shutdown, and we went back to work, and then everybody else started shutting down again, we were still making cars. We were still making 600 cars a day. Amen? We were finding excuses not to go to church, but we were still building 600 cars a day. We were making excuses not to go to Bible class, but we were still building 600 cars a day. We've been finding, we look, y'all, y'all don't, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to mess with y'all a little bit. We, we found a way to get the food we needed. Some of y'all have been taking pictures on Facebook and sitting up at restaurants, but I don't know if I can go to church. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. The doors of the church are open. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank and praise you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this word. We pray in the name of Jesus, God, that we would not allow our giants to dictate what you have said in our hearts. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would be glorified. We, God, we ask that you would bless us as we leave this place, but never from your presence. That you, God, would be glorified in everything that we do, that we say, that we think. Help us to move and breathe this word. God, we love you. We bless you. We praise you. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.